Welcome to another episode of Anyone Can Cook. I'm Kate Dertronco and Zani, and today's episode is about the stuffed bird. And a stuffed bird could mean chicken to turkey to so many different variations of any bird to make it holiday happy. This season, we're focusing on happiness, and even though the situation is unlike anything we've ever experienced before, we're with a mission to keep you fed, to keep you seasoned, and to keep everyone together and united in the family table. For this episode, it's about the bird. So I'm gonna roast a turkey roasted into a chicken. And you're like, what? I'm gonna stuff a small baby chicken inside a turkey. And most of you, it's kind of like buy one, take one, take one, and there's, ooh, there's a baby. <laughs> but what it is, you'll want to see the difference between turkey and chicken. All roasted seasoned differently some roasted um, into like a seasoned salt and some have an earthiness and the flavor that's gonna come running at you at the punchline. What you need are the earth ingredients. So the earth ingredients are three different type of mushrooms, button mushrooms, long enoki mushrooms, white mushrooms. Um, also, we have launched our seasoned salts. So at Enzani, we have created a curated marinade, which we call the dry salt rubs. And the salt rubs, there's one that's like smoked. There's one that's like seasoned um, with paprika and like a Spanish saffron. And all these salts will go into the marinating of our turkey. And then we have some young corn. The young corn comes with a little bit of sausage and I just chop them up roughly. And the main star of a stuffing is the mung bean. So like almost like a turkey, like a turkey mofongo, mung bean and local quinoa, which is from um, the local mountains. And I've soaked them overnight and they look so amazing. And I'm excited to get them in the rubs and the spices. Get a little hint of, um, of earthiness and a little bit of chili in there. And then to complement that is a cauliflower head. So we're gonna explore such unique, strong, pungent flavors that's gonna go inside the, the bird, well, two birds and you'll see how we actually open the turkey once you buy it. I mean, when you see it in the grocery, you'll realize how do you cook this humongous bird, and I'll teach you how. We are here with this eight pound turkey and those who have never cooked a turkey, I'm gonna do this for you so you know how to properly dissect the insides. Um, so you have the turkey and I'm just gonna take it away from the plastic, okay? And what it is, you'll have the blood and I want to take that. Of course, when you buy turkey here, mostly it's frozen. So I give it two days defrosting time. And ta -da! It's magnificent, just so huge and packs a punch. So I'm holding it on um, this thing that's kind of tying the, the legs in. And you want to get this side up. 
and this red button is important because it pops up when the turkey's cooked. So the next step is you're gonna find the giblet and it's the head. And the head is how you make gravy and the giblet contains all the flavor of, of any turkey and it's such a mainstay. And then you have its liver and it's just like peekaboo. What else is in here? So you're, you're gonna want to just feel and take out everything that would restrict it from an airflow. So the cavity is open and free. So the first thing you want to do is find the section and you're going to create your finger and create a pocket in between the skin. So I'm just creating this layer and I'm reaching out to get it prepared. So while we're at that, I'm going to get my seasoned salts and I'd like to introduce you to our holiday jars which are found in celebrar.com and this salt right here is actually um, a roasting salt. It's just, I want to do a dry rub on this turkey. Because I've defrosted it for 24 hours, it's ripe to get marinated. And this salt is a smoked salt. So this can be found in cerebrar.com. And let's admit it, in the pandemic, it has changed the way we live. Um, this turkey I found from the ladder and the latter is an online and restaurant supply group that has been around and also pivoted into an online site. So thank you, the latter, for um, providing us the turkey and Celebrar for carrying and zani salts. And there's a lot of other things that's coming on bound for the holidays. You can find them online. So I'm just gonna take this rub and marinate smoked the smoked seasoned salt that we have on site on the turkey so i'd like to grab that and just massage it massage it on the turkey and what it is i'm putting them in the cavity too and getting them ready so that we get every bit covered. Once I get that, you know, you're gonna make a mess, okay? So this mess is a celebrated mess because this is where you get your hands up and dirty and there's no excuse, there's no excuse. So I get the wing and I massage it in And I get the salt and these salts are quite so cheap uh, a set of three is 180 pesos and I recommend it because you know you think about you want an easy dining and these salts represent smoked um, herbaceous something if you wanted like a ethnic spice so if you look at that the turkey is gotten basted fully you take butter and you crumble it so easy and then you let it sit in between the skin and what it is it's like Botox and you massage it you massage it in the turkey and this is where nobody tells you how do they get that crispy golden skin well this is the answer and when this turkey cooks if you look at that, I'll just plow it inside the legs. This is where I want to create some drama. I got, I mean, I like using sage, but I only found rose, rosemary in the grocery. Oh. And you're gonna create an imprint. I'm choosing to let it seep inside there. 
And if you look at that, can anyone see that greenish tinge inside the skin? Yep, you said it. So I'm creating something very artistic in the skin by sliding in. Gosh, look at that. And it sits there so beautifully. Look at the look at that. My butter is somewhere stuck in there, and that's gonna be so great and ambitious. You'll see it gets golden by the time it cooks. You'll be like, wow, I need to do that. And you'll see the reasoning why we're doing this to the rub. Okay, don't forget the other side. So I got some butter inside the cavity and I got some salt inside the cavity too. And I used the whole bit. Um, you want to use roughly about four tablespoons of salt. Um, you get the skin, you get the bit. Now, I found myself a baby chicken. So this baby chicken, right, if you look at it, it's maybe about 400 grams. It's cute, it's cute. Um, we're gonna stuff it inside the turkey and you're like, what? We're gonna impregnate it so that when somebody expects a stuffing inside, you're gonna see chicken. So again, you wanna get the butter and stuff some, some of the chicken with butter. And I'm gonna get another salt. And there is a difference, mind you, there is a difference. This salt right here. Also, you can find this in celebrar.com. So if you look at that, I'm gonna make it sit right on top of each other. And just rub. It's salt and sesame, black sesame, roasted cashew. It's gonna have a very complementary effect because it's getting stuffed into the turkey. Mind you, when this cooks together, um, they're all going to coagulate with the marination and the flavors. In this period, I found some lentils. And you know, it could be mung beans or um, I found flat lentils. And these lentils are actually found in any grocery store. And I've soaked them overnight. And I'm just going to Get that inside. So already you have a gemstone of the baby getting stuffed with some mung beans and I call them konmufungo, konmufungo because there's quinoa, flat lentils, um, mung bean like mongo and because I stuffed it with the salt those salts are strong and flavorful. And then I'm gonna close it. And then get a little bit of butter, just to get it in there, and it's gonna cook inside. So, as soon as I close it, I'm gonna stuff it inside the turkey. And you're really like, wow, that is crazy. But you know, the Americans did it the best, and we did many experiments of turducken. <laughs> which is usually they have um, a 10 kilo, 12 kilo turkey. So this one is just a chicken stuffed into the turkey. And I am finding it sitting so right. And this is ready to go. This is ready to go. So what I'd like to do is take the other side. For those that need a visual, because it's raw, you'll find chicken is stuffed into the turkey. And you know, my grandmother would go, okay, a roar, you cannot make the leg show. So I'm just gonna get the skin and then seal it together like that. Right? What I wanna do on the top Get, make the airflow open because the airflow coming in from the top to the bottom circulates it and would make it extra extra crispy guys this is a serious thing it's you know it's tech 
its tech when you deal with cooking a bird because it's so huge. This is gonna go five hours into the oven. So I'm gonna take um, just some base salts and do an extra rub. And this rub has a little bit of muscovado because I like a little glitter. Well, I call them glitter because, you know, it's always nice to have all the base flavors, sweet, salty, um, spicy, umami. And this is what you're creating with this turkey. And you're like, Kate, I have never heard this before. But guess what? I've experimented on turkey maybe for a good 10 years. Uh, made over 400 turkeys in my lifetime and I have mastered the turkey. I'm known for creating my Thanksgiving feasts and that's when I get all my friends in our home and we gather but because of the virus and the pandemic it is impossible so I am sharing you a golden card of trying to create turkey recipes that has been tried and tested at your home. Okay, I am ready. So you want to be near a casserole. So heavy! Whoops. And this turkey is going to go inside the oven. We're going to put it at 120 degrees. And 120 because, because this turkey is about 8 kilos, it's going to cook over 5 to seven hours at 120. Usually I like to keep my turkey at 100 and I baste it overnight. And this is the secret. If you are in a hurry, you can go up to 200 and it would cook for two hours. But I want to achieve the most succulent, juicy turkey. And because I've stuffed it with a chicken, um, it's gonna be very different. So, I just want to make sure I'm feeding my friends, I'm feeding guests, and what I'm doing is I'm putting the wing out because it gets covered, so when you go in the oven, the wing always gets stuck. So I'm just making sure the positioning of this turkey is at ultimate positioning so that everything is getting caramelized on top. So let's go proceed to the oven. So I'm positioning the bird in the middle section of the oven. Wow, so hot. And that stays there for seven hours. And I'll see you soon in seven hours more. So let's carry forward. I'm making extra sides. So I have a pot of boiling water and I've already soaked this overnight but what it is, I'm going to get the quinoa and the lentil in there because I'm gonna cook it through. Oh, I just get a little bit in. So if you look, I think I have about five cups. The first thing we're gonna do is to create the stuffing. So there's a series of ingredients. So I have maybe two day old bread a little bit hard and that's what you want to use as the stuffing to stuff. I like my bread a little bit rough chopped. So I'm just going to do big cubes. And if you look at that, you can't go wrong. Anyone can do this at home. So I just, and that's going to sit and get toasted. And we use the same pan because we're going to create the seasoning. So th while that's running, I'm getting an onion. I'm getting an onion right here. And I'm going to get maybe four cloves of garlic. I take, dissect the garlic. Oh. 
I'm going to put it on a flame. Get the butter in there. I'm just going to chop the garlic. And that looks absolutely fantastic. Garlic and butter, nothing better. Rough chop an onion. And that while that's seasoning, I'm going to get three chorizos. And the chorizo is a perfect combination. It's Cebu chorizo, perfect combination with lentil or um, mung bean. And for me, it complements so well with uh, the quinoa. So this chorizo, I like to just chop it and like break it up, you know, like big breakups. I like them in chunks. I mean, obviously if I cook them, I can just like Deconstruct them. And they go as like a blob inside. And what it is, it's already seasoned. Um, the chorizo that you find locally are already sweet, and I don't like sweet, so usually I counter it with like uh, smokiness. So I'm taking this another smoked salt from the Anzani fine food selection. I'm gonna take about a teaspoon and drop the smoked salt. If you smell it, it's so intense, it smells like cedar wood, you know. Uh, over the quarantine, we've played with different ways of cooking and we find if the base is good, everything else follows. So we've taken smoked wood chips and mesquite and we infuse that in our salt and we dried it out and it's, it's absolutely fantastic. So, while the smoked salt, the sweet from the chorizo is getting marinated together, the perfume of the house reminds you of Christmas. And this Christmas is just, you know, the Filipinos love to eat. And all these ingredients, I'm making turkey Asian style. Well, other than the rosemary, but you'll see how we've achieved this little number. So I'm getting the chorizo to a nice cooking phase. At that point, I'm gonna check on the quinoa. And if you look at that, you could tell it's slowly getting cooked through and this is really the step so while we're on that I'm gonna keep it in, and if I look at my breadcrumbs it has toasted well I could go a little bit more I don't mind giving it a little bit of like just hardness because you don't want super soft soggy bread filling or like stuffing I want that hearty so the chorizo infuses all these flavors and while we're in this phase and cooking it through we cook through all these flavors together you're gonna see I'm gonna take the breadcrumbs and transfer it to a bowl and I'm gonna take a little bit of butter. Maybe that's about two tablespoons. And then take the giblet from the turkey. The giblet from the turkey and the inside into the pan. A little bit of salt. Check on our 
lentil, and the quinoa. So this is the part where I'm finding it's almost cooked. I'm going to grab some of the lentil and the quinoa and drop it into the chorizo pan. And that's going to have the flavor of the chorizo We're going to take the corn, it's already cooked, and what it is, the corn's got some bits of Vienna sausage, and it's got bits of um, some tofu, and we get it in there. Oh, I just smell the perfume of this stuffing, and the house is really smelling absolutely Full of spice. Oh, and will you look at that? I'm gonna give it some time to cook. And I'm looking at my the other bits of the quinoa. It's already seasoned, so let's remove that. So we're gonna let it drip. and get that brown, the giblet, as that cooks together. I drop what we just made into the bread crumbs. Oh, that smells so beautiful. In this stage, you get a dry stuffing. I have some pure chicken stock that we made a day before. Right here. And you need about half a cup. And this already packs a, a stuffing of full flavor. In this phase, I'm just gonna add some of the white enoki mushrooms. What it is, I like to add it raw because they're so versatile and I want to keep the texture because you'll have the crunch, you'll have you know, the lentils, you have the chorizo, you'll have some mushrooms and you get that going and you get the mushrooms you get that incorporated in the bit and i'm gonna add instead of um whipped cream i'm gonna add some sour cream to our lot instead of milk because i like it thicker and if you find that's already melding in together. The breadcrumbs, the mushroom, all of that. So right here is the sour cream. And the final touch when you make stuffing is the binder, which is the egg. So I like to use two eggs. And you drop one egg at a time. and your stuffing is ready. Just reminding you that we have a series of packed everything, from the lentils, to the chorizo, to the smoked and seasoned salts that we used, and then the plain mushroom, the breadcrumbs, the quinoa, just a ball of texture in your mouth. So, ladies and gentlemen, that is ready. That is ready. So we're just gonna transfer it into a container and then you're all set. And then you just leave your kitchen and do whatever you need to do because 
everything is in the prep. Once you get your turkey in the oven, you, you don't mind it until the next day even. But if you wanted to, six hours, seven hours, it stays. But this is the ultimate. Very easy if you have mung bean, chorizo, I put a little bit of Vienna sausage, some mushroom, bread crumbs, like everyone has old bread in their freezer. I like presentation. And I want to put my stuffing in a bun pan. Who says, why not? So I'm gonna go beat the odds. I mean, we already did it with a turkey and we stuffed it with a chicken and we used stuffing with lentils and quinoa. So why not give a different variation to our, our stuffing? So we get, I, I want a mold because when this cooks, it will resemble a cake. And what it is, it's wet now, but it will bind together and cook together. So this will also stay for a couple of hours in the, as it sets. And you really find it so beautiful. This goes into the oven. ready to set to do whatever you need because our mission is done let's just go to the final bit of checking on our giblet yes you want it to be in this phase and you got I want it still caramelized and in this bit I'm gonna get some flour, maybe two tablespoons to get the sauce thickened. So you'll see what I mean because instead of cornstarch, I want to create a jus but thicken it. So because we used butter, two tablespoons of flour. In culinary terms, when you do this, it's called a roux and you cook through the flour with some butter and mind you the flavor is already there from the giblet and it's doing its wonders it may not, may not look like much but it's there so we cook it through I love that this giblet is giving us the juice And don't mind if you're creating different color to the flour. What it is, it's marinating together with the butter and the flour and the giblet. So when we're at this bit, we'll finish with a little bit more butter. You know, I do this in my eyes because when I see something thickened, and I would like to let it sit longer because they call this right here a white roux. When you get that yellow bit and it's like, when it gets and changes color, you'll get the darker roux. Roux meaning R-O-U-X, okay? And it's a culinary term, those that cook at home. And those home cooks are like, oh, okay, okay, I get it. Yes, we all get it. And the flour thickens as a paste. We're in this phase and it's cooked through. So I'm gonna just leave the remaining bit of the stock. And I strain it. Yes, and now do you see how the gravy comes together? You said it. Wooden spoon and I mix it through and it's thickened, you see. Look at that. And this is the part where I add some alcohol. So I've infused my own alcohol, which is right here. 
the vodka and rosemary and you're like what are you doing but I've done it so many times and I find vodka creates that nice thing you can use rum but today I'm using vodka and the vodka has been in here cooking marinating with the rosemary for about two months oh I'm being generous oh why not <laughs> it's Christmas right you want to make everyone happy so I have reduced with stock and vodka Wowie. where I'm gonna get some of this mushroom because I love that it's textured get the mushroom in there knife but I just find when you do this we all need to get something done with our hands because this pandemic has created such a discontinue that when you do something with your hands it gives you a sense of gratitude and grounding and this is what it is for me and hopefully for you if you love to cook and you love to experiment I mean sure there are YouTube videos but it's so different if you get everything on this front so I'm gonna take that and chop it up my stock is ready and my gravy is perfect see I'm thinking even right now by looking at it it's too thick what I'd like to do is just add more milk turn off the heat and I get the gravy so yummy with the mushrooms because I like the mushrooms really having their texture so will you look at that guys we got our Jew oh some white gravy to go with the turkey just amazing actually so that's ready and in a few hours I didn't need to really work I got my turkey my gravy and my stuffing grand so see you in a bit see you in a few hours mm. fantastic I, I, I can taste the vodka and it's come out so dramatically it's a nice nice kick and we finally have our turkey oh gosh wow will you look at that guys so what it is if I take a look at this the the button has popped do you see what I mean earlier it was just on the bottom and the button has popped on top and if you look at it closely you see the rosemary that's imprinted on the skin and it's so interesting and here we are as we get to our finale we remove the acrylic holder and I call it acrylic because it binds and holds the turkey when it cooks and because we really want the presentation value I'm using my gloves because it's so hot <laughs> and now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lift the turkey and transfer it on the plate oh it's just so moist and juicy and voila this turkey produced a lot of juice and and then you remove it and it pops out and you got your turkey so next step you're gonna take out and you know that it's cooked when it comes out clean now do you remember our gravy that we did earlier and I put it in a glass pot and I let it sit 
and transfer it to a container with the mushroom. And where I'm gonna go with that is if you look at the turkey, the chicken's still in there. The chicken's stuffed into the turkey. I'm gonna take the stuffing that we put in the container and we just turn off the heat because it, temp it temperates the room and, and flip it over. Because it's like a, a crusty stuffing cake that has formed. And if you look at that, that's what fills our pot. Let's just clean this up. And it's created well in the center. It's a little bit crusted. And where I want to go with this is I take the green beans and I let it sit on top and gather. And I made another one, actually, where we put it in a roulade. And this one is made of apple. And this is coming from Anzani in the restaurant. And this is how we do our turkey. Our turkey sets are found in Thanksgiving. And here we are. A beautiful, beautiful, beautiful turkey feast with some gravy, with some cranberry, and some potato yam. And just like that, our roast is done. I just wanna say thank you for joining me. It's been a pleasure, and it's really been a slow marination between us, the turkey, roasted to perfection. I heard the cackle in the skin, and just wishing everyone a beautiful, happy holiday.